chair, co-chair, and uh, ladies and gentlemen on the audience. Now we move a little bit from wood to bamboo. It is also a wood, of course. That's a different wood. Bamboos, probably as you know, are uh, woody grasses that grow in tropical and subtropical and uh, temperate zones of the world. In fact, they occupy around 3% of the global forests. And it is the uh, fastest growing non-wood, non-forest timber product, providing income and subsistence to a lot of people the world over. Millions of people depend on bamboo. So here, the I will start with a little bit, uh, very, very few slides on about INBAR. INBAR is the International Network for Bamboo and Rattan. INBAR is an intergovernmental, international organization. Intergovernmental because INBAR consists of a council which consists of, presently it has 37 member countries who are part of the INBAR council. The headquarters is in Beijing, in China. And uh, there are regional offices situated in India for the South Asia region where I am based. And uh, we have regional offices in Ecuador for the Latin American region and Ethiopia, Ghana for the West African region and also in China. So the countries covered under the South Asia regional office in Delhi is Bangladesh, Bhutan, <coughs> India, Malaysia, Myanmar, Nepal and Sri Lanka. So the, just to give an idea, all these 37 member countries have nominated their own particular governments to who will be the nodal, nodal point for INBAR in those countries. For instance, in India, the Ministry of Environment and Forest, the Government of India is the nodal ministry for interactions in uh, the projects and whatever activities that INBAR takes up in India. Like that, every country has a uh, ministry or department with whom we are uh, supposed to interact. That's why it's called the intergovernmental. These are the red uh, p points are those uh, INBAR member countries in the world, spread, spread around the world, almost equally in Asia, Africa and Latin America and Caribbean. Then the yellow color indicates the major bamboo and rattan importers, that means the, the huge market, the biggest market, potential market. And the green is the global distribution of bamboo and rattan. Rattan is cane, probably you may all know. This is the INBAR, uh, this is the strategy under which INBAR works. Are the three million development goals. Goal one, to eradicate poverty and hunger. Then goal seven, to ensure environmental sustainability. And goal eight, to develop a global partnership for development. Meaning like uh, INBAR, stresses working in partnership rather than going alone. These are the different programs under which uh, INBAR works. The Environment Sustainability, sustainability then the Livelihood and Economic Development Program, Trade Development for Domestic and International Trades, and we have a Global Bamboo Housing Program, and also a NTP program, it's called the Non-Timber Forest Products. But in this uh, paper, today presentation, we will be dealing with the Global Bamboo Housing Program where we will be showing as uh, bamboo as a modern construction material, the challenges such as uh, the supply chain issues and the various treatment method and the importance of that, the joineries, the load bearing capacity of bamboo, the engineering material, bamboo as an engineering material and so on. These are the multiple, uh, multiple applications for bamboo from the small handicrafts to housing because uh, it goes so it can, uh, from housing even I have a pen drive which is made of bamboo here and from here you can also take to the bamboo housing from small to the biggest one. So I will stress upon the global bamboo housing program here. I would uh, invite my colleague Nirpal to join me. He, come. I'll introduce Nirpal. He's the architect who looks after the bamboo housing program in Inbar, the global bamboo housing. 
This program deals with research and development, dissemination of knowledge, technology transfer in the construction uh, area, and also support the development of markets for housing. Rupal, come. Five minutes. Yeah. That's okay. Yeah. So I'll be quick. Uh, so why bamboo? So uh, as you know, this is, as you said, is the fastest growing plant on earth. It matures from three to six years. So uh, after 10 years, it's, uh, it kind of decays. So the best use of bamboo is between three to six years. And it's like a, a fruit, you know, if you don't eat it, it goes bad. So it's better to use it. And it takes only 60 days uh, for it to grow 60 feet. And because it's a very high in tension and compression, and it, uh, re uh, there was an earthquake in Costa Rica, uh, which is like one of the 7.6 reactor scale, and they had built hundreds of, th uh, hundreds of homes uh, using bamboo, and they all withstood while this concrete fell. It has very high insulating properties, and it's economical. It's much cheaper, it's about 30 to 50 percent cheaper than conventional material. So I just uh, just want to stress, like in terms of strength, uh, you know, bamboo. Like if you look at the, um, especially the elasticity part, bamboo is uh, 1.5 times uh, stronger than steel. Sometimes it uh, compares to, uh, I mean, uh, than timber. Sometimes it even compares to uh, steel. So if wood is good, we think bamboo is better. Uh, <coughs> So, and in terms of uh, the, the strength, uh, one bamboo cone can take from four tons to eight tons. That's like uh, s like eight elephants uh, for for ease of understanding. And in, uh, because of all these properties, like a lot of people all over the world are looking at bamboo as construction material. And this is uh, about five or six uh, industrialized countries in uh, Shanghai Pavilion decided uh, decided to build with bamboo, and this is a structure built by uh, uh, Germany. Yeah, German, German. It's a German senior pavilion. So it's a very big statement because like 300 years ago in the same uh, expo, in the World Expo, they were building with steel to show that it's a building material of the future. Now they're building with uh, bamboo, so it's a big statement, it's a big move, move forward. Yeah, so it, the cycle is coming back. And so what are the main challenges with what we have in terms of bamboo? I'll go quickly go through it. So you see, like all this area is bamboo. Like, and bamboo is there, but how do you get it out? You know, so, yeah, so I mean, this all the lighter green part is bamboo. And there's tons of bamboo in uh, India, but it's not utilized because the supply regime is pretty strict. And the other part is treatment. I mean, one, I mean, people understand the beauty of bamboo and understand the strength of bamboo, but they don't want to use it because it doesn't last long. So, uh, so there's a comparison. If you don't treat bamboo, it lasts one to three years. But because of like modern technology, you can treat bamboo and it can last from 25 to 30 years. And if you build properly, if you design uh, against weathering, it can last even longer. So there are like simple technologies like this to treat bamboo, or there are industrialized uh, technology which is derived from wood treatment. And then the other uh, major um, like bottleneck is treatment, uh, because it's, it requires a lot of specialized skill, and it's very labor intensive process. And there are very few tools dedicated to bamboo. But uh, I mean, there over the time people have developed many uh, connection uh, uh, technologies, some are using timber, some are using rattan, some are using like uh, like epoxy and jute and uh, steel rods. And this was a major breakthrough in bamboo construction, like putting rod, uh, metal bolt, and then grouting it together. It was a technology developed in South America by uh, Simone Village, a famous architect. So it kind of revolutionized uh, bamboo construction. And now, like in Bar, we are working on, we are saying, like, we have this wild idea. We are saying, why do you worry about uh, connection? Why don't you shape bamboo as it grows? So you don't really need treatment. So this is a, a, a first uh, trial of shaping that we just did. And so other, other major issue is of um, policies. Uh, there are very few countries that 
uh, take bamboo uh, as a building material like in terms of like harvesting regime it's much uh, lenient uh, compared to timber but in construction material it's like uh, there's a big uh, challenge ahead but there are some uh, good examples like uh, recently uh, Peru and Colombia approved uh, bamboo uh, in the building codes and there's like ISO standards that are being developed so this is a small uh, uh, good example I want to show here there was a big earthquake in Sichuan which uh, where like 5.5 million people lost their homes and so what Inbar did with uh, other groups uh, like um, with uh, uh, Citibank and uh, EU uh, developed a project where they use uh, bamboo from the forest in Sichuan and then connected it to livelihood so that they can use uh, whatever material they have to uh, reconstruct their own homes which was a very uh, good project and was so what basically we did is use bamboo like and then process it this is like just a quick run like uh, round bamboo is cut into strips and then glued together to make boards which are then used for housing like for example this is much uh, uh, high-end houses and this is a place called uh, just interrupt this is a place called, uh, a park called uh, black bamboo garden in beijing where in bar in past technical uh, knowledge was used to build this modern house. This is a bamboo house, totally bamboo house. But uh, from outside, it doesn't look like a bamboo house. It is a bamboo house. The floor, everything. Yeah. And so, I mean, uh, like, so we want to show this, like, if uh, bamboo can now do anything uh, like uh, the other materials can do. You can go big scale, you can make a build, uh, like, this. if you can build this with steel, you can build with bamboo. If you can build with stone, you can build with bamboo. Uh, with that, uh, I end this presentation. Thank you. Thank you.